Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. I watched this movie. Uh, I had to. Uh, was going to get on a plane. Anytime I'm going to fly more than three hours, I go. I'm going to download some stuff. And um, so I watched this <coughs> movie. Download this movie called War Machine. It's got Brad Pitt in it. And I didn't know that. I just you know read the the trailer for it. Talked about America's war in Afghanistan, and I thought, okay, I'll check it out. And it was interesting. I wouldn't recommend the movie at all. It's leftist drivel. But in a strange way, it it essentially beats up Barack Obama. And rightfully so. And um, I'll read you a little clip of what the, the guy wrote about the movie and I'll give you my take. But he says, uh, American movies are traditionally of two minds about our military might. Celebrating it in John Wayne epics and mocking it and everything from MASH to Dr. Strangelove. But War Machine has decided, with exceptional results, that it wants wants it both ways. It wasn't exceptional results. The movie is not worth watching. But I, was glean, I gleaned out something from it that I want to share with you. Anyway, it goes on. Starring Brad Pitt and written and directed by the gifted David Michaud, War Machine is, uh, on the one hand, an assured nervy black satire on America's involvement in Afghanistan and on one particular soldier, commander of the U.S. forces and four-star General Glenn McMahon, a.k.a. Big Glenn or Glenimal. Now, from what I've gleaned out of this, he's McChrystal, General McChrystal. Okay? And because I was trying to figure out who the heck is General McMahon? And um, so it's a it's a play on what was really happening during the Obama administration. So let me give you some ideas. You know, right now we can't fire, at least under Obama, we couldn't fire. When engaged, we had the, we had fake bullets. Our soldiers were given fake bullets or had no bullets. So they're standing guard on the line in many places in these forward territories, uh, forward environments, and they go, well, we don't have any bullets. And if you fired, you better have a good reason, boy, or else you were in big trouble. So th- it was it was a war that we were never meant to win. And that's what these guys are saying. They're, they're, I mean, it becomes a love initiative like this guy McMahon, who's played by Brad Pitt, would say, you know, okay, so we've got eight insurgents and you kill two. How many are left? And they go, nobody wants to answer. And he goes, well, all right, you do the math. I mean, you have eight. And he goes, but that's not really the case. You have eight insurgents. You kill two. We have 20. Eight minus two equals 20. Now, that's, I remember that scene vividly, except it was, I think he did three. But it doesn't matter. The number doesn't matter. His point is, if you kill an insurgent, then they're going to go out and make, you know, get their friends. They're going to come back and they're going to double their forces. And so you haven't really killed anybody. So we shouldn't kill them. And this one black dude is is going, he's like, you know, so man, what y'all want us to do? And and you got to see the scene. I mean, I, I don't want you to even watch the film because it's not worth it. But the scene is essentially McChrystal or McMahon, playing, who's really McChrystal, saying to these guys, don't engage them. I, what they call they called it you'll get a medal get this you'll get a medal for not shooting for showing restraint they they called it combat restraint medal <laughs> now I don't know if that really exists because you know I didn't look it up but I would not be surprised if Barack Obama gave the military a medal for not doing what the military does and I find it incredible that now was some of this mocking, uh, you know, and, and they had a scene where uh, McMahon has to meet uh, uh, Obama. He's coming in on a plane and they're going to have a conversation about how things are going in Afghanistan. And all Obama does is go, you know, General, uh, we, we ran out of time. Uh, I got to get this bird up in the air. So uh, we'll have to catch up another time. And that was it. And, and the orchestration of the general changing his schedule in order to go meet Obama for a quick, what turned out to be 
nothing more than a photo op was unbelievable. And so here's where I come back to. I think the guy was in one way mocking Barack Obama to say he took Afghanistan so seriously that the general he put in charge of it, he could not even spend five minutes with the guy after telling the general, change all your schedule, come meet with me. He does a quick on the tarmac photo op where Barack Obama met with, you know, shook everybody's hand, came up to the general, said, general, so sorry. Got to get this bird up in there. We, we, we'll talk again soon. And then the next time they talked, he was fired. Now, again, I don't know how closely this mirrors the real thing, but essentially what they said, one of the, the interviews in Rolling Stone was, so you're in charge of all of the, you know, all of the military in Afghanistan. Yeah. How many times have you talked to the president? And the general goes, um, oh, he says, you've only talked to the president like one time. And he goes, yeah. And he's going, how could you possibly be waging a war effort? And you've only talked to the commander in chief one time. And he's like, uh, well, I don't know. You know, he's busy. Now they didn't make the Brad Pitt guy to be the buffoon there. They really were saying Barack Obama doesn't take this seriously. How are you going to take it seriously? How are you going to do your job? Oh, and one of the other things that they did, and you guys may be saying, Kevin, why are you talking about War Machine? I'm talking about War Machine because I'm telling you how this previous administration, perceived or otherwise, handled this so-called war. And what may, I hope, is to be the difference with Trump. But they set it up where they said they, they fired one general, and then they show General McMahon taking over, and it was General Whelan who was replaced, and essentially, and just as a, as a deal breaker, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I'm going to steal the scene from it. The very end, they fire McMahon and replace him with Bob. And the guy, I think he intentionally just said with Bob. They didn't tell you the general's name. And you see Russell Crowe in fatigues marching down the airport the same way that other general started the show when they replaced General Whelan. And what they were saying is, it's a cycle of guys who are very competent, who are not being allowed to do their jobs because of an incompetent Barack Obama. And it's going to be the same result. And that's what I got out of it. And that's why I wanted to share it with you because I, again, I'm out of my wheelhouse when we start asking ourselves, why are we doing this over there or whatever? But I'll tell you this, I trust generals to go make it happen and get it done more than I trust a commander in chief like Barack Obama. And I watched that show with, honestly, I didn't even know what to expect. But I watched that and went, now I'm beginning to get it. And if you do watch it, watch it for that reason and that reason only. Because I'm telling you, other than trying to make the military out to be a bunch of drunks that travel around country looking for war, I think it really sheds some light on what's going on, what happened in the Obama administration. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.